Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Pastors of Pain. Yeah. After a brief hiatus, Father Kerry is back. I thought I got thrown off the show for Is back in the studio slash our living room. <laughs> um, welcome back. Sorry about your uncle. Oh. That was kind of when we, we recorded a couple episodes. Oh, and yeah, that's right. And you were gone. I know lots happened since then, which we'll talk about today, the dedication of your of the new church and like torn awesome. calf muscle. Yeah, tell us about that. My uh, that also has to do with the dedication of the church. My uh, my uh, my adventures. Father Kerry jumped off the top. Uh, um, Celebration. It was supposed to be a trust fall, and it went wrong. And it, uh, and I and I got hung up <laughs> on my ankle on the on the bell tower. Uh, no, on the top of the door. I was that close to making it. Anyway. I, no, no, no. Yeah, thanks for uh, my uncle Bill Marcotte uh, died. I mean, not unexpectedly. He just had he had long yeah. cancer for twelve yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. So I went up there to see my auntie and uh, and help them prepare for the funeral. And then, but I couldn't be there at the funeral because the dedication was that same yes. week. And it's written in stone. Man, it's written so April twenty ninth. It's there. Yeah. It it is a it. What were we? I was going to tell you. I was going to tell you something on the podcast, and then oh, bouncy house. So. Oh, no, you know, what happened before, to your cat? The week before the dedication. So, you know, I'm leaving for Poland all, on a couple of days to take a bunch of students on a pilgrimage. And there was a bouncy house that was also an obstacle course on the lawn out in front of the church. So, apparently on the Catholic folks group me, I was being challenged in my older years that I could not beat associate pastor Father James Porter and he said, "So you're 47, and he's what the hell?" He said, "What is he? 31? He's 30. He's 30. He's 30." And you know, I mean, he was just walking around. I think he just went yeah. out the front door. Okay, great. So, I um, I stretched out. And I work out. I work out pretty good. Yeah, I have a torn hip flexor and a kind of torn glute muscle, but those have all been pretty stable. What hasn't been stable? One of uh, those was from jumping off a helicopter pad. No, one that of them. That was a good story. One of, okay, yeah, one of my hit a mogul really bad. Oh, ski, uh, skiing, yeah, yeah, and then yeah, jumping off a helicopter, the helicopter pad. pad. I was there for that. Yeah, that 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 didn't turn out too well. And then and then Doc Gowie, who retired. I know our doctor retired. What? Well, who is that guy? It's a total bummer. I know. Why doesn't he like? No, anyway, he needs to stay around. And he said, "You can't be doing this stupid stuff." And then and then, uh, yeah, can't be doing this stupid stuff. We don't have enough priests. And um, oh, Father Porter's back. How old? How old are you? Thirty-one. Okay. okay, there he is. And Tony Jabor told me the same thing. He's like, "Dude, I can't have you jumping off." Yeah, that's our orthopedic surgeon. Yeah. So he did now, my knee. So now I'm sitting here um, with a bag of ice on my calf. Week two of this because then I was at uh, a family's pool and jumped off their high dive. Okay, the and message doesn't slow. seem to be getting through. No, it doesn't. I'm kind of a slow learner. I, I, it does. It takes it takes years. It takes well, years. who won? Did you or Porter? Oh, I beat him. I beat him handedly by like four seconds. I mean, he he was like on the slide coming down while I was doing victory dances. Okay. Well, I was at my third round of victory dances. I'm glad you're glad you're better. So that was that was a in, that was the day of the dedication. No, that was oh, not. That was day. That was the Sunday. Oh, the dedication was Saturday morning. Yeah. Okay. This was Sunday, and then we had stuff all week, and then Friday was Vespers with the relics. Yes, yes. So, I'm, well, let's walk through that. Let's walk. Okay, you want to go through this? So, here, so this is, uh, it's becoming, you know, sort of old news here in Stillwater. You know, there, I think most, I think we've said this before, most Catholics will go their entire life and never go to a church dedication, or even hear about one. And if you're living in New England, you're going to last, going to, feel last yeah, going to watching churches, yeah, get yeah. closed. Well, in Stillwater, in, you know, basically, in 60, 61 months, we've had two dedications. In five years, we've had two dedications. Yeah. Now, not everyone went to both or one, or but you're around it, and you're, you know, so it's a it's a unique place. It's a unique place to be. But the the rite of dedication of a church is really something. It's fresh in my mind. It's pretty it's pretty awesome. So what I want what I thought we would do is just you know, so if you were there that you can sort of relive it, but if you weren't there, you can go watch it. It's still up on the uh I saw that on the uh, on the St. John Catholic Student Center 
Facebook page. Yes. Um, it was two, it was about two hours, two hours, two I, hours and one minute. I think. Bam. It, he's. I looked at my phone as we were, when we got outside. Yeah. And it said twelve oh one. That's right. So I really have to give shout outs to Father John Grant. Lauren Lacey McGill yep. now. Lauren McGill. Lauren McGill, which I haven't learned how to say yet. Uh, Ashley, the staff, Taylor, Brett, um, Rita, uh, Irene, Father James Porter, Sterling the Third, and and just that, and our campus ministry staff of Holly and our focus missionaries, uh, Kimberly Williams, who's on our staff as well as a volunteer catechist. They really just put a lot of work. And then, and then even Alex Rice from Cooper Construction Consulting is down in Oklahoma City. He showed up and he said, you want, what do you want me to help you with? We said, nothing. Because wow. Lauren had everything organized on one side. Father John Grant had everything organized on the other. Uh, Taylor and Ashley had everything organized um, in another section. Brett had everything. Everybody had their part that they were doing. Yeah, it was really well done. It was. It was a. I thought it was the a, food was outstanding. It was a smooth oiled machine. Yeah, both Friday night and Saturday. So I have to give shout outs to those people. Yeah, because I had zero stress. You was, were so. I mean, I've seen you. We've been around each other for twenty years. Yep. I've seen you. Uh, you know, pretty chill. Like when you jumped off the helicopter pad. <laughs> uh, and I've seen you, you know, and the true in spasms. Mode. Yeah, like super, you know, super stress and moving, moving fast and flying around. And I kind of, when I showed up, both Friday night and Saturday morning, had in my mind, because I think sometimes, and you do this for me too. Like, there's times when we we help each other, like, be be nicer or like be less, you know, stressed. So I'm in the I'm running an event. And you happen to roll in, you'll say, hey, you know, anything, like anything I can do for you? So I was kind of in that mode, like, all right, I got to find Carrie and like help him, you know? <laughs> and you didn't need it. No. You were like just walking, kind of walking around. I was just chill. I was I was doing uh, cleanup work, just anything that needed to be done. Oh, you were able to like greet people yep. and show people around a little bit. Everybody and- had their job and my job was to greet people and make sure the punch list was done on the building. I was a little jelly because we, when, when I thought back to our, our dedication here, which was beautiful, um, I don't, I don't know. Like I was, I was kind of, I was flying around that day. And part of that was we didn't really start planning that mass. One, because we didn't really know the date. Uh, but like yeah. I got here in January and that was in March. We didn't really have it all. Like it, it hadn't really been sort of put together. And so we were, you know, up until I think we, I think the program that was on a, it was on a Sunday. I think our program like went to print on like Wednesday. Like yeah. we were making all these kind of last minute. Anyway, so it made it, it was beautiful and and really enjoyable. I, I just admired your, the, the well, piece you, with which you went about it. Well, you also, when they dedicated this place, Father John Grant had done one dedication. This was his third yeah. in five years. Yeah. So he already had a checklist. We were, his, we were the guinea pigs. Yeah, he had a checklist of stuff, and him and Lauren sat down and were like, this, this, okay, you guys are doing this, who's doing this? And those two divided the plunder and just split up the work. And well, Yeah, and I remember sitting down with Lauren and Taylor probably a year ago. We went to, we went and got some barbecue, and they were like, all right, tell us about yeah, yeah, the dedication. Right. And I was like, well, you know. Here's all the things that like went well. Here are the things that, you know, that you gotta sort of make uh, make provisions for. Yep. So just yeah, that you guys were kind of way out front. Okay. So so awesome. not to bore the people of God, um, because then they're gonna hear stories about this. This is what's beautiful about a dedication, and it is the body of Christ, the church coming together in this great unison of this, in a way, baptism. Of this building, yeah, the church gets the building gets baptized. Yes, and and all the things with it: the baptismal font, the altar, um, the tabernacle, the ambo, the lecterns. It all is one unifying body. Now we had been using the student center since uh, the end of January, early February, in that in that window, 
And so we didn't have to go in and bless that. And we've been having mass in the Hoftorium and we've been doing all those things in there. And then to, to have Vespers in the, in the church was just magnificent to bring out the relics of St. Eulogius, the Bishop of Alexandria in 906. Okay. So, Oh, sorry. Two, 609. So two, so two questions. Where, let's start with where, so every, not every church, every church, every new church can have, I would say should have, you know, can have relics. Yep. Where, like, where do they come from? So our we have two relics here. One was already belonged to the parish yep. of St. Francis Xavier, and then we requested one of Blessed Stanley Rother from Archbishop Coakley, and he sent it to us. Okay. Your relic, it's it's a little random. It, it is a little random. So I must uh, say. So when we started talking about relics, of what relic was going to go into the altar, uh, Father John Grant on his checklist, and myself, Lauren, and Father Grant talked about this, of like, it has to be a bone of something. It has to be visibly a piece of bone. It can't be a sliver. It can't be a hair. It can't be a piece of clothing. It has to be a chunk First of First class bone. relic. First class relic, yeah. a bone of a saint. So I called one of my buddies up who it has just like who keeps he, bones of yeah. saints in his basement. <laughs> that would sound weird. He he has lots and lots of relics. And he has lots and lots of relics because all these convents were shutting down that were Franciscans. Oh. And he started collecting their relics and then giving them out to other people. And then more relics, other groups started sending them to him. So he's now got like storehouses of relics. And so what does he do? He gives them to people who are going to use them on the feast days. And so we um, took that, I took that relic because it was the biggest piece of bone I could get. And I flew out to Colorado. He gave me them. I remember that. And I, and I flew home with, uh, I had to buy an extra ticket for him. <laughs> they were like, He's how old? The climate of customs. I was like, he's like uh, I'm traveling. Years I, excuse me, I'm traveling with human body parts. <laughs> uh, sir, can you step over into this? Be call a supervisor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, okay, so who is so who? What do we know? We about don't know a lot of him. He's okay. just uh, he was the bishop uh, of Alexandria in 609, and we have That's a relic, old. and we have paperwork for him uh, okay. as a relic. And it came out of a convent in Wisconsin when it was. Uh, I think like the convent was destroyed or something like that in the, in the fifties. Oh. And so this relic then uh, came, it was with another group of sisters and then yeah. it made its way to okay. my buddy. So Friday night was uh Vespers, which is also known as evening prayer, yep, which yep. is kind of sung for those who don't know this. It's like a sung, uh, the Psalms of, yep. of the evening prayer of the church um, with the, in the presence of the relic. So the church is still not a church. So like That's at that right. point when the, the, when you walk in and you guys you put this in the book like do, you know don't do not genuflect Jesus isn't there do not bow to the altar right yep. it's just a piece of, of stone um, not dedicated yet you know don't treat it like a like a church uh, we treat it with re respect yeah 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 you're not it's, like yeah. skateboarding <laughs> um, but then so the relics were up front and then we no he carried them in oh he carried them in Ditzel Ditzel yeah that's just the with... deacon the deacon carries them in. And then, and then we prayed evening prayer. Yeah, that was and right. that had a and then had a nice dinner. So it was like, I mean, it's if if we make sort of comparisons, it was like a rehearsal dinner. Like, all right, we're we're in the church, we're getting comfortable, we're you know we're kind of getting there. Yeah. And then and now and then we're gonna go have a nice meal. Uh, you know, across the hall. That's what it, it had. It had rehearsal dinner vibes. Yeah, it <laughs> rehearsal dinner vibe. It kind of did. All right, so then that night, so that was about, you know, I don't know, evening prayer took about 15 minutes or, yeah, probably 30 minutes or so. And then we had a nice dinner. And then everybody goes home and comes back Saturday morning. Yeah, that's right. Um, so sort of setting the scene. We're at St. John's. Uh, the church is not really decorated. I mean, there's no there's no flowers. That's right. There's nothing on the altar. Yep, no candles. No candles are, there, there's the, your, your, there's Easter, not even, your Easter candle was there. But there's no book on the readings. But yeah. not lit. Um, so it's a kind of a bare church. Sort of think of like Good Friday when we take everything. Yeah, that's right. When we take everything out. But, you know, people arriving and everybody all dressed up. And um, there was a great, I mean, I just loved kind of the spirit of, uh, there was a little bit of like, Fine, you know, sort of yeah, finally. Exactly. But then just a great joy yep. among people. Lots of people who were coming to the dedication had never been. 
They, I mean, they, some they people had, had near drawings and they yeah. had, you know, but had never. You know, some people had been to Stillwater since they graduated from college, yep. which was 20 years ago. Yep. Other people hadn't been to Stillwater in a couple months. And some people didn't know each other. So they walk in and they're, I'm introducing people that live in the same town to each other. Like, oh, you all is from the DFW Metroplex. Yeah. Here, you all talk to each other. And here, I, and I went around and I basically played introduction of donors nice. of going around. And the, and they to get into the dedication, you had to fill out a, de, uh, a um, um, a, um, what's that called? A piece of paper that says I'm willing to give to a this. A pledge. A pledge form. Yeah. You had to fill out a pledge form. That's, that's who we invited. We did the big invite to. And then the next day, yeah, the next day was students, and you had no well, sign so mass. And- so we allowed students, and we seated everybody um, in the church because we also didn't know how many students were going to show up because we had donors who said, I can't be there, and then at the last minute said, I'll be there. And you're like, ah. So, uh, yeah, it was stuff like that. So what we did is— We love you, but not that much. Yeah, so we, so we seated everybody in the church, and then— the funniest moment of the day happened. What was that? I was standing inside the door, and right at 10 o'clock, not a second after... Father John Grant was ready to roll. He was ready to roll, and bang, bang, bang. He hits on the door with the crozier. So the bishop, yeah, so that's how it starts. The bishop hits the... Knocks on the door. I was still talking to our senior site superintendent, Justin Fiegel. And um, I don't think anybody was ready. There was a knock on the door, and there was a knock on the door, and I don't, and no one was. I, you know what? Uh, when they um, when they coronated King Charles the other day, yeah. Did you see that? There was a scene where the Royal Marines took off their hats. You know, it was like three thousand Royal Marines, and they're all standing there, and they're and they. I did not watch it. Oh, you did not watch it. I watched a little bit of because there was no English soccer on, so I had to watch something English, and it wasn't like I didn't want to watch. I don't know some world movie anyway so he uh well they lift off their hats and he says three cheers to the king and the queen hip, hip, hooray and they go hooray hip, hip, hooray and it was beautiful they did it three times anyway that's what i was hoping for there was a minor twitter controversy uh, actually I, I, I'll, I'll stop yeah this is it'll be it'll be major hip, majorly hip, distracting hooray. anyway I, uh, I'll, I'll bring it up in a later episode okay great that was hilarious the, uh so the, I was so the bang on the door. Yeah, and I was hoping there was going to be a hip hip hooray, and I wasn't. <laughs> and I'd open the doors. And I was like, "Let's get this started," and it rolled from there. And we just got everything going. So and, there's a knock. So the bishop. So it, it starts with most of the people outside. So you're well, you and didn't pastor. Well, it starts with the at least like the clergy. Uh, it's, it's and the bishop outside. We had students outside yeah. too. Some students outside. Yeah. And so the the clergy, and then we open the doors. The senior site superintendent uh, reads it, hands the keys to the bishop. The bishop hands them to me, and then the procession begins. And Brennan Lacey and that choir, yeah, the slash and burn. The music the was really, really, really good. Yeah, it was so beautiful. So it was all students. The only one who wasn't a student up there was Dominic. And Dominic was our organist for two years. He's not Catholic. And we trained him up. And now he works at St. Francis of uh, St. Francis Xavier. Right. And in Enid. And Enid. Yeah. yeah. And he's our music director and just doing fantastic. It's, um, I, and I, you know, at, afterwards, I mean, there was obviously lots of talk about the building and the, and the liturgy, but in the music. And somebody pointed out, they, you know, basically everybody, everybody in that choir loft was like 23 and under. Yeah, that's right. Brendan Lacey, golly, just amazing. put together a group of people and instruments yeah, and voices instruments, and practices. Yeah. Yeah. And so he went from literally from like Holy Week to Easter to the dedication. And then his sister's wedding. Yeah. And just boom, boom, boom. He, the, the, he, get, he gets a nap. The joke, the joke was that we were we were mixing music during those three three periods to prepare for Lauren's wedding. Yeah, <laughs> everything like, was just a run up. To, <laughs> everything to was wedding. a trial because that was our first wedding in the church as well. Anyway, so then the procession in. Yeah, so knock the, on the door, the keys. Yeah, yeah, and then the rece- What I what I thought was really cool is when the lecture when the, the they had to bring up the lectionary to read, and to present it to the bishop. Uh, because 
there was no lectionary on the stand. It was the first time the readings were ever going to be done for the yeah. Ambo. Yeah. And then it, it went through it went through the readings and and the Psalms and just absolutely beautiful. And the readings are all very much about kind of sort of two like about I saw water. Yeah. No. About the temple, about the yeah. church as like the church, but then also like the that that the people that we are like we are the body. Mm-hmm. So there's all, I mean, you just all through scripture, a lot, you know, Old Testament, a lot about the temple. Um, Jesus says like, uh, you know, I will, I will uh, uh, knock down, you know, knock down this temple and rebuild it in three days. And yep. people are like, what? What do you mean? This temple took 47 years to build. Uh-huh. Um, it's so all of that. I, I, I love, so I was in the first row. Um, so the priests, there were, I don't know, 225 priests or so, yeah, something the- like that. Really cool. I mean, that was fun to just kind of, every time we can all get together like that. So I was kind of sitting in the front row. I mean, I was, I was sitting in the front row and I'm listening to the, the, the hymn. Um, I saw water flowing, flowing from the side of the temple and you and Bishop were moving around the church with holy water blessing. No, or did just Bishop do it? Uh, Bishop did it. Just Bishop. We oiled it. Yeah. Yeah. So that came later. So Bishop goes around with holy water, basically, and we would say kind of baptizing the church while this song is being sung. And what am I looking at? I'm looking up into the apse of water yeah. flowing. And, and that was not that specific scripture, but you were you were quoting the psalm, like a deer that longs for running stream. Yeah. But I'm just looking. I'm, I'm listening to this thing about water and the temple. I'm watching the bishop throw water around and i'm looking at this beautiful painting of water anyway it was a it was a moment and and if you look down at your feet it goes from paint to marble i did not look down Uh, at my feet if you i was too busy looking up because the the water you told me to look up i know the water is the the bushes from the second story of creation in genesis but the water then flows down and flows down out of the temple and when it gets down into the nave of the church it turns to marble, blue and white marble. Very nice. I know. All right, so the bishop goes around. He, he blesses the church kind of like a like a baptism. Yep. Then there is, uh, we use chrism. Oh, yeah. So sacred chrism, which is used, I say often, is used in the highest moments in the life of a Christian. Baptism, confirmation, or right. ordination of priests and bishops. But then we also use it on objects. Like altars, oh yeah, and walls. Uh huh. So the bishop takes chrism, um, and then you, so you, like you, kind of went right, and the bishop went left. Yep. And you anointed the walls. What was that? Yeah, like? well, it was it was really cool, like to take off your chasuble and hang it up after he uh, he anoints the the altar with all that sacred chrism and rubs it in. Oh, the altar was first. Yeah, the altar, altar was first, then the walls. The okay. Walls. Yep. Uh, I had that backward. So then we're walking around and just I was like, oh. Like, this is the wall, the 12 pillars of the church. Yeah. So there's candles, 12 candles yeah. around, not unlit. That's right. Right at that moment. And you're in, yeah, you it, went it to, was, you know what this, the, uh, it, it was, it was just a beautiful time. I'm, I'm never going to be able to do this again. Uh, and just to walk around, don't look at me like that. <laughs> we always talk about, but in the, this is a little inside baseball at in the world of priests is like, you, you kind of get. You know, you can get sort of a reputation for, oh, that's the guy who, you know, he's really good at schools, or that's the guy who's really good at, like, taking a parish that's kind of struggling and turning it around. Well, there's also, like, oh, that that's the guy who builds stuff. And so I think uh, Father Carey does not want I, to be... If the bishop said, I need you to build me something... Then you're going to build something. I would build You're going to like it. And I would love it. But I'm not going to be like, let's, I'm not Bob the Builder now. And like, we can do it. Carry, yes, we can. carry the construction. Uh, the senior site superintendent, Wakulich, no way. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it was just beautiful to walk around and to walk back down the center aisle and see all these people here. You know, because I knew everybody that was at the dedication. It wasn't like, oh, like all these people are just, I have been in all of their homes, and I've except for that one family that randomly walked in. That was also one of my favorite parts of the day. There was a family that were just touring OSU. Oh yeah, and they walked in and were like, "Oh, this is a nice church. Oh, 
is there is there mass? And someone said someone was like, Yeah, there's mass right now. And they were like, oh, okay. So they went they, they were in like shorts and t shirt. They went back to their car yep. and changed and then came and went to the dedication. And then found out it was a dedication. Yeah. And then they were like, Oh, this was more than we bargained for. <laughs> that's gonna that's a great I love that. Yeah. I love that. Just kinda how God could so can surprise us. Okay. So you go around, you anoint the walls, uh uh-huh. you come back. So the church now has been baptized, confirmed, uh-huh. and now the first communion, the Eucharist, yeah, and that so was... bishop celebrating the mass, all the priests around the altar, yeah, it was a, it was like the concelebration of the liturgy around this altar that we had been designing, and this building, and this floor, yeah. and this sanctuary, and these walls that we had been working the last six years on. Was, it, the, my, my sister said afterwards. You spent a half your priesthood working on this church. Like, yep. Uh-huh. I have my priesthood working on this church. And it is just, it was just beautiful to, like, the collegiality of the priests, guys who were there who I hadn't seen in a while. Um, guys in, uh, like, we set it at 10 a.m. so dudes could come in for it. And it was, it was just a, like, the, it's, it's like when the bishop is there for a liturgy, it changes everything about the spirit of, the spirit of what collegiality is like that we are here to serve yeah. the bishop and his mission and here in the Diocese of Tulsa. So the Eucharist is so confected, a transubstantiation. Yeah, if you look up, do you look up, do you see the Holy Spirit painted on the ceiling? I didn't look up. I mean, I, that would have been awkward. I was standing right below it. Oh, it's, it's really cool. Like, if you just tilt your head up, there's the hand of God. I'll check that out tonight. When we, yeah, when you, when you check it out, there's the hand of God. Um, that is from the Church of San Clemente, and then the Holy Spirit right above oh, the altar. Very nice. Yeah. So the Eucharist, so there, but it's not sort of a normal Mass because after Holy Communion, the the Eucharist. Ah, oh, just looking at a picture. Right on. The Eucharist stays on the altar, and that was a good moment too because the choir was singing. Uh, what was the Panis Angelicus? So, um. Oh my gosh! It was just awesome. But they kind of they sang they sang like probably six or seven verses. Yeah, and it was just a moment to be able to just simply just, chill. Well, just adore the Lord. I mean, there He was on yeah. the altar, and and anyway, that was awesome. So then, for the first time, the Eucharist is placed into the tabernacle, and then. The the prayer after communion, just like regular normal mass, um, and then you got up and said a few things. Yeah, uh, how'd you feel about that? Did you feel good about? I, I felt good about that. I, I I put some pen to paper, and I've been thinking about it for a couple yeah. months now. Yeah. And it was just brief, brilliant, and brief. And the five B's of public speaking: be brief, brother. Be, be brief. brief. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I thought yeah, you didn't go brilliant. Do you have to be brilliant? Oh, no. I was brilliant. I try to cover all my bases and thank everybody. But there's just, you know, um, you know, people who are at that de- at the dedication, like uh, Denny Scheller, Paul McMullen, and Bill and Rita Ryan, were working on this like day one, long time, w- day one and day five. Bill and Rita Ryan came in on day five. Paul, and- so they weren't there from the beginning. The kind I'm of, just kidding. yeah, uh, and and, ju- and just those donors who were there of who. Love St. John and love our mission to build saints for the kingdom of God. Just have yeah. given given their given their hard earned money, yes. Yep. But also I've trusted us like with yeah. their money. And that is love it. So then the final blessing occurs and then the big the big procession out. The hymn, Oh God Beyond All Praise, oh. which is wonderful. And then um and then there was a party. And then we had a little cold beer and cake. There was a party. Yeah, that was good cake. I made it. No, you did. I did not. I did not. Anyway, congratulations. Thank you. Victory. It's amazing. So if you've Hit not been, hooray. if you've not been, uh, just 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 stop by. Uh, people are making just... pilgrimages to Stillwater to see St. Francis and St. John. Oh yeah. So I would encourage you this summer. Great opportunity. Yeah, come on over. Wow. That's the end. All right. Check out our websites. Check out our social media. We got a lot of stuff going on this summer. Yes, sir. Have a great day. Peace.